Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. It's another day of Hearthstone Mercenaries Mythic Boss Rush, week 5, day 4. Let us bite and Captain Galvangar. But the first boss today is Dragonbone Golem and Infinite Roots with Arvus is my solution for today. Just going in with Infinite Roots, Arvus to slow the enemies down, Elise Cutcar for the roots, and boom, that's just going to blast. Dragonbone Golem, first fight. My office unfortunately is not maxed yet, so I have the equipment only at level 2. Enemies are permanently 2 speed slower. But 2 speed slower is enough in this case, so that's totally fine. The equipment is only going to slow down these enemies that are on the board when it happens. So when new stuff is being summoned, then that won't be slowed the same way. But that doesn't matter because these are the real dangerous ones anyway. And turn 1, Elise is able to prevent the Creeping Madness here. We can sacrifice the Arthas. And things are going well. Obviously there's a lot of Death Rattles all over the place, so... Who knows what's going to happen with all of that stuff. But it is what it is. Now these are acting at 6 speed instead of 4 speed. So all of a sudden we are in a position where... Blizzard can actually stop them. Wee. Actually, even level 1 equipment would do, right? Because there's 4 speed attacks and Blizzard is 5, so... Yeah, you don't even need the level 2 equipment. These are not slowed. They can still act. The thing is, Kargar is never going to use the same ability twice in a row anyway. So... That's just... That's just nothing. And now we start blasting. He, sure, these get to attack, but I mean, I don't mind that. That's totally fine. Boom, we get some effects going. We have the monkey. And they need some lucky death rattles to even kill the monkey. And if they can't kill the monkey, well, oh dear. That sounds really bad for them. We do this one here, and a bit of Blazing Song, and just Blizzard. Six speed, six speed. They can't do anything. Some dead rattles happening again. That one just not able to do anything. Monkey took a bit of a hit. That's fine. I believe Monkey will be fine. No, well, maybe Monkey will die. But even if Monkey dies, it doesn't matter. But obviously, if Monkey lives, then the damage output is just far better. Yeah, well, I mean, that dying stuff is not really going to happen now, is it? Not really, no. Blizzarding stuff is going to happen instead. We Zap. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Bone Golem is just... Just doesn't stand a chance here. Not against the monkey power. And the infinite roots. So, that's fight number one. And we're good with that. We need to finish that off here. Well, that, that's going to kill it. Yeah, so we're fine with this now. And then we're ready to go to the fight number two. We have the Celestial Bench, so we're looking for those Celestial Treasures, of course. But we don't need them for fight number two yet. Fight number three is where we start to need them. Which is good, because I got pretty much nothing here. Okay. But there's already one Celestial Protection from New Zhao, so that's good. But now, Maestra. Well, we don't have Arthas yet, but we do have Elise and Gadgar, which means that we actually have a lot of rooting power. Maestra's abilities are attacking at 4 speed and 5 speed. Elise can root at 4 speed. Gadgar can root at 5 speed. So the rooting stuff still works in this fight as well. Let's see. 
right. Elise, Katka, Gigi. Could have brought the new Zao, I guess, as an option. Like here, Maestro trying to attack at four speed, but hey, we have the four speed route for turn one. So Maestro is actually not even going to... Maestro will be able to kill these eventually. But that's gonna be fine. Master trying to attack at 5 speed. Oh, really? At 5 speed? How inconvenient. There's a blizzard coming in at 5 speed. So, no attack at 5 speed yet. Next turn's probably 4 speed again, if I remember correctly. I think Master just alternates between those two. Yeah, so now 4 speed. Now first of these will die. Because I do not yet have... The route available on Elise. But that's totally fine. You only lose the first one now. There's still another one left to go. And we're going to get that route eventually. And now we have the monkey, so... Damage output is increasing. And now 5 speed. Oh, 5 speed. Well, 5 speed doesn't really do much, you know, because I happen to have this 5 speed blizzard right here. Wee <laughs> Obviously, if I had an office for this fight, then that car would still be able to do everything. Knives out, alright. Well, now this one is going to die. Well, that's a bit of a bummer, but it's fine, it's fine. I'm just blasting a little bit. And for the next one, we are going to have the... 4-speed route from Elise. See, now we have the 4-speed route. But now Elise is just actually going to be chilling here. Because I don't need to route this turn, so I will save the route. I guess I could attack with Star Seeker, but... I can also just chill. I can stab is nothing. Now comes a 4-speed attack, and now we have a 4-speed route. So... Yeah, that, that's Maestra. So you don't need a lot of Celestial Protection for this fight, and then you will have more time to pick up Celestial Protections for subsequent fights. Because the root, root comp just handles this so, so incredibly well. I will need two copies for the last fight, because I can't heal there at all. So obviously this Elise here... There was... There was an alternative to sacrifice the Elise. Perhaps I should have done that. But now we managed to roll Celestial Protection here already. So now we have two copies. One copy is enough for Plague more generally, and then you want two copies for the final fight, so... But we are now all set, and this, this bounty is basically done. Well, one and two copies, I mean, that's at the level I have at that, so that's sort of like around 1,000 Renown investment. But if you had a 10,000 Renown investment, you would have twice the twice the protection I have, which means that then one protection would solve all of your problems already. And yeah, these just didn't do much of anything. So we just start blasting and we just start blasting and it's gonna take a while. But I mean between Gigi and Shuen scaling is there. It's just going to take a while. And it's going to take even longer in the last fight. The last fight is pretty It's not hard really. More like it's just tedious. And obviously, if you don't have enough damage reduction for the last fight, then because you can't heal in the last fight for a very long time, then it's just going to be a slow, slow and painful loss. But with what we have here, then... We're just blasting. Gonna take a while, but it's okay.
direct some efforts in that direction as well. Trying to optimize, optimize killing them all. Same time, if possible. Least number of turns. No AOE damage wasted, maybe. We fairly easy day overall. I guess the last fight, if you don't get enough damage reduction, because you can't heal and the enemies have loads and loads and loads of health, then that can be tricky. But these others, not so much. Blasting in the middle. Boom, 600 damage. How about that? And one more turn, I believe. Could be two if it just gives stone. Yeah, it gives stone. Ah, oh, bummer. It's actually. No, it's still going to be fine. We can do a tiger lightning. Job's done. This works, right? I think this works. Animations on those quillball. Yeah. Zap, zap. That's awesome. Alright. And therefore we get to the final fight. And I already have the treasures I need. Well, let's see what I roll here anyway. Mm, heal power. I guess the additional heal power is what, he, what we take here. And upgrade that celestial protection a little bit. Two copies of celestial protection. That's... How much damage reduction is that? That's gonna be like... 171 is that? With my levels. Something like 171, I believe. 171 should easily be enough. How much attack do they get? Well, they actually got quite a lot of attack. So that means that I will actually have to play this. Actually, actually something to play for here. Well, we have Divine Shields and stuff, so it should still be okay. QG is the fastest. That's the most intimidating character right there. Now I probably want to start pouncing immediately. Because they got quite a lot of attack. But I will need to start taking that attack away so that I will not get into trouble. Something like this, then. But between the Divine Shields and the damage reductions and everything, it should still be perfectly fine. But yeah, that's a, that's a big damage. Big attack roll, definitely. Taking a good chunk of damage right there. Okay. So it is actually possible to fail this. It's gonna be awkward. Do all the damage reduction and everything. I need to get to work on pouncing. I needed to attack with this. I forgot that. That was a... That was a mistake. But now we got some Divine Shields. Divine Shields are good. The Frost Wolves will fight 
Losing the Divine Shield on Niu Zhao here is bad. They're gaining more attack. This one is the fastest. Bullish Fortitude. Probably has to be the Bullish Fortitude. With the taunt up. Can't heal is a problem. We'll have to try some pounces. But there is a chance for me to lose, because losing New Zhao means that I will die. The attack roll was just surprisingly big. Battle shout. Nusa will need the divine. Will Nusa need the divine shield this turn or next turn? Next turn, I think. Nusa will survive this turn. Battle shout will be needed next turn. I think that's how it goes. Yuzo will survive this attack and will need the Divine Shields for next turn. Surprisingly tough. So far so good. And now we need the Divine Shields. Because the attacks are coming. Lots of attacks are coming. We'll need to pounce. Okay. So now we have the Divine Shields up. And when I lose Divine Shields, I get health. So that's going to keep me alive. an attack. I lose Divine Shields, but I gain health. Then I can regain some Divine Shields again. Yeah, it's a little tough. Little shout. Well, I have the Divine Shield on this one. That's fine, right? Attacks or random. What if it attacks GG? GG will survive that. It's fine, GG will survive. I need to pounce. Okay. Didn't manage to hit GG. That's great. And for next turn, I have the Divine Shields again. It, it's it's a close call. It's a close call, but it's doable. Here come the attacks. But we have the Divine Shields in time. I can actually pounce that away now. Bouncing that away now means that there's fewer threats remaining. Alright, we'll make it, we'll make it. Even against a, even against a big attack roll. And here comes the attack. But it just gives me more health. And I lose the Divine Shield. Wonderful piece of equipment. Really, really important for 
really, really important for these. Mythics. I need to deal a bit of damage to Gigi, but not, not enough, not enough. No worries. Elmangar didn't use the cooldown ability this time. If it did, then that would have made things a little bit more difficult. But only a little. Now we have managed to reduce Galvangar's attack. Yeah. Nusa has been gaining health recently. That's great to see. Alright. That was a little scary for a while. I would need to upgrade my treasures. That was a big, big attack roll. Threats remain. Now it uses the frightening shout, but now it's a little bit late. The frightening shout. If that had come earlier, I would have had to manage the divine shields very, very carefully. But now it's all good, it's all good. Just blasting away, finishing the fight. <laughs> Even getting the heals now, with Galavan Arg finally gone. And boom. I'm alright, so that was that mythic boss rush. Infant Roots with Arvos Celestial Bench. It just gets the job done. Two good bosses for infinite roots at the start means that this is one of the easier days to complete. And 65 renown for repetition, 150 would be the first time bonus, 36 turns. Alright. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.